Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and watching, coming back, all that stuff. Appreciate it very much. Hope you're having a great day. And I'm working on another HDR photo, and that's because I did this recent video, and I'll put the link up there, talking about my typical uh, landscape workflow in Aurora HDR. And doing that video kind of prompted me to go back and kind of fart around with some of my other photos, because I've taken brackets literally for years. Like, I started photography about 10 years ago, and I started doing HDR. That was the first thing I did. I didn't know anything about photography or cameras or f-stops or nothing. Nothing. I didn't know anything. And uh, anyway, um, I started in HDR, so I've been taking brackets forever. Um, long story short, that uh, doing that video kind of made me think, you know, hey, I, you know, I kind of miss Aurora HDR. I hadn't really been doing that many of them. I've been doing a, um, a lot of Luminar stuff and, of course, some Topaz studio stuff and i'm going to keep doing both of those as well but i wanted to drop another um uh aurora hdr video in and since that was a landscape workflow i thought it one of the things i talked about in there was uh you know i do things a little bit differently with a sunset photo i made a mention of that in the video so i thought i would do uh kind of my typical workflow for like a sunset kind of photo so let's jump into it here we go now this is uh i've got three exposures i blended this is one of the exposures i'm holding down the little uh, preview window and that's my final and it's vastly different right so um, there it is before uh, and there it is after so let me reset the uh, the filters and then we'll dive into editing this guy okay so here we are in Aurora HDR and there's my base HDR photo once again here's the uh, let's call it the middle exposure now I shot this a number of years ago like five years ago in Amsterdam and back then I had a Nikon uh, full frame camera and I used to shoot seven exposures one stop apart. Uh, I don't do that anymore. These days I shoot uh, only three exposures two stops apart. But in those days um, I shot seven at one stop apart. So if you look up here, which is gonna be hard for you to see, but uh, the exposure values on the three uh, exposures were, were negative four, negative three, and negative two. Uh, they were all shot at F13. So I'm standing by the, I think it's called Bloman Market. It's their floating flower market, which is what you see on the left-hand side with a canal and a boat went by and it was sunset and I was there with a friend and I was like, oh my God, click, 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 click. So um, it did a pretty good job of actually merging the three exposures and getting me a fairly, I wouldn't call it sharp, but I wanted the boat um, to be you know as clear as possible, uh, which is another reason I use some of the darker exposures versus some of the lighter exposures. Plus, I err on the side of just shooting to the dark anyway, um, and I kind of prefer to use the dark exposures, personal preference. So anyway, first thing I did is I went into HDR Basic, and you can see that made a huge difference. Uh, warmed up the photo, added some contrast, a little bit of smart tone, bumped up the shadows. So one more time, there's that, and there's that. So now you can see some spots in the sky. There's one really annoying one, and there's a few little ones. You can't remove spots in Aurora HDR. I wish you could. That would be a great addition in a future version of it. Uh, but I finished the photo here, and then I go to Luminar to take the spots out. I'm not going to do that in this video. If you want to see Luminar videos about how to use a spot removal or clone and stamp, there's a video right there. So um, I do that later on my own time, not on your time, my friends. So okay, there's HDR Basic. Next up is the color filter and. Um, a little bit of bump in saturation, vibrance, and color contrast. Basically, I went from that to that. And already, we've gone from kind of blue. Now, you know, this was sunset. You can see it's kind of, it's always hard to tell um, uh, in a single raw file. But um, you can see there's a little bit of color in the sky. I wanted more color in the sky, and I wanted to amp it up. And that's really something I do with sunsets. I prefer to make them kind of more sunsetty, y um, and, you know, create that warmth across the photo, which is kind of what I'm doing here. So HDR Enhance was next, a little bit of clarity and a smart structure, just to give it a little bit of crispiness, um, which you know I think it does a really good job of applying that where the details are and not really where you don't want them, which is mostly like in the sky. So um, Denoise, I save that for later. I always do that uh, pretty much as a last layer. Next is LUT mapping, and as I said in that last video, I don't really use LUTs that much. I don't get that excited about them. And here I am using a LUT on that photo and also on this photo. But if you look at it, let me show you the before. There's the before the LUT, and the LUT I use is called Glorious. And here's the after. Just a nice little pop of color, and I like color. So um, that's the one um, LUT that I, uh, 
I would consider using a lot. Let me just leave it at that. So I like the glorious LUT. That sounds a little weird. Um, okay, image radiance, and let me turn that on. So there we go. Now I also talked about this in that video, and I do the same thing with sunsets, and that is HDR, by definition, sort of basically um, creates an even distribution of light across a photo. That's what it's great at, and, and that's often what it's used for. Um, and I tend to go back a little bit on that because um, I want to, you know, I like the idea of there being some shadow and some contrast in a photo. When I see a perfectly lit scene, you know it's not perfectly lit. Your your eye isn't uh, doesn't adapt to that, which is I think one of the reasons that people see HDR photos and they're like, whoa, what kind of camera do you have? You know, um, and so you know it's uh, it's not really my thing as much. Uh, I mean, I do it some. You kind of can't avoid it to a certain extent with HDR. But anyway, I'm getting a little off topic. But the point is. I like image radiance because it adds back. You can see there's the before and there's the after. A little bit of shadow, a little bit of that soft kind of Orton effect almost. Um, and it also softens up a little bit of the details, which I also like. Um, a lot of people like that hard, crispy look, and that's fine if you do. Not really my thing. Uh, you know, I prefer the little bit softer, smoother look, a little bit of mystery, kind of like what's over there, what's behind that, what's around the corner, you know, that kind of thing. And I think adding some shadow and some softness sort of helps bring that out. So that's what I did. Um, a polarizing filter, just a, a light touch there. I don't even know if you can tell. In fact, I'm having trouble telling. So I could probably delete that or in this case, reset it. You can't delete it. Um, uh, so, you know, anyway, that was that. Details boost. As I said in the last video, I don't really use that very much. On a scene like this, if I were to use it, I would use it on a separate layer, and then I would mask it in just slightly to some of the buildings, and that's about it. But I'm not really, um, you know, I don't bring up the details a lot. That's just kind of my thing, right? So uh, on to glow. Now glow, boom, if you look at that, uh, maybe you can't tell. I went pretty light. Let me turn it off. If you look at the sky, it gets a little bit brighter. So there's the sky before and now after. A little bit brighter. Um, and so what glow does is it kind of pops that those brighter parts and makes them kind of glow, hence the name, I guess. Uh, but they're a little bit brighter. So I went kind of light at 25. Let me show you if I were to do a lot, you can see how big of an impact it has. I don't want to blow out the sky. I kind of liked it at 25. Here's the thing I like about it is in a sunset like this, your camera naturally is going to create an image that's going to be dark in the kind of lower parts of the photo and bright in the sky because the sky is brighter. The glow kind of goes back to what I said before about creating a little bit more of that realistic look in that I think adding a little bit of that back into the sky is kind of what you would expect to see. The sky you would expect to be brighter than the water and the buildings and things like that because the light source for the photo is in the sky. Um, so, you know, I do a little bit of that. It's just subtle, but it's just a thing I like. You don't have to do it. Um, Okay, adjustable gradient. Wonderful filter. It helps you rearrange the light, uh, which I like to do. So what I did here is slight dip in exposure in the top, which, hey Jim, didn't you just add glow to brighten it? I did. This is the uh, same thing I said in that previous video. There's a little bit of a dance that I do where I'm kind of going back and forth and I do one thing and then I do the next thing to kind of almost counteract what I just did. All I'm doing is jacking around. There's no science to this. This is not a science experiment. This is not the four steps you take on every photo to make a perfect exposure. I don't do those kind of things. Hey, I should do a video. The four thing. No, I'm kidding. Um, but um, I'm, I'm dancing, right, with the image, and I'm trying to get, I'm massaging, pick your word. It's going to go downhill real quick if I'm not careful. Um, have a good time with it. Check it out. See what you get out of it. Um, but I did a little bit of contrast, um, and I went a little cooler, right? The warmth slider in the bottom, or excuse me, in the top, I went a little bit cooler. Uh, and then on the bottom, I lifted the exposure a little bit, tiny bit of contrast, lifted the shadows a little bit, and added a little bit of warmth. So let me show you the before and the after. Honestly, it's not a massive difference, but um, it's visible, right? And uh, it was pleasing to my eye, and that's really how I edit. I'm just basing it on, hey, do I like that or not? That's really the ultimate test for me. That's a litmus test. Tone curve, super powerful, super great, didn't use it. HSL. I did that in the previous video. It just gives you a uh, lot of control all of the, over all these colors. Didn't use it on this layer. I did use it on the next layer. I'll show you that in a minute. 
Color toning, one of my favorites, and uh, this is also known as split toning in literally every other app in the history of photography, uh, but it's called color toning here. You can see what I just did in my photo. Let me turn that off again. What color toning or split toning does, you split the highlights from the shadows, and you can pick a color and a saturation level for that color in either the highlights or the shadows. In sunsets, I like to go into the highlights and bump up that pinkish hue. I just like it personal preference, but that's what I did. You pick the hue here, I'm at six, right? Which is kind of, there's a slider here. As you, you can see the sky kind of turning. It also looks pretty cool down here, kind of closer to the purple, in fact. Um, and if you get to the far end of the spectrum, it's kind of going back around to the color you started at. So that color and that color are, you know, at either end of the spectrum are basically the same. But anyway, I was at six. So, you know, a little bit of pink, right? There's five. Um, and saturation level 20. And only because I didn't want to blow it out and get crazy. You know, I don't want to do that and create some neon experiment, clown vomit, freak show, right? So um, I'm just going to, what was I at? 20? Can you remember? 20? I think it was at 20. Um, not like you're going to answer me. Um, okay, and then shadows I left alone. I will often bring up the blue in the shadows. I did not do it here, but uh, color toning. Make it your best friend. You're going to love, uh, you're going to love it. Uh, and vignette. Here's a little thing to know. I did not want to add a vignette to the photo. However, I did want to brighten the center of the photo, which is that inner brightness. And so all I did is I moved the amount to one, because if I put the amount at zero, um, that inner brightness is not going to show. Um, it only shows when you change the amount slider. So I could go to one. Uh, so I get a vignette of one, which means I don't have a vignette. You can't recognize it, but the inner brightness will show. So let me give you a better example. I'll go all the way to 100. I'll put this at zero and that didn't reset. How come is that? Let me see here. Zero, and I go inner brightness. Hey, it's working. Oh, because of size. No? Well, I just confused myself, my friends. Okay, well, anyway, the point was, I didn't want uh, any of the vignette, but I did want some inner brightness, and I, I was thinking it wasn't working without a little touch of slider action there, but apparently I'm wrong. Aha. There it is, now it's doing what I said. Something's going on here, my friends. Uh, you're witnessing it. So my point was just, if you want to add some inner brightness, see now moving the inner brightness slider, the amount's at zero, it ain't working. That's a big no-go. However, um, I wanna go to 15 on that dude, and if I just go to one here, um, I'm now able to adjust this inner brightness and make that um, look how I want. So. There we go. There's a tip that apparently works sometimes and apparently not others. Don't know why. Okay. Anyway, I didn't want to add a vignette. I did want to brighten the center a tiny bit. Oh, and place center. I just clicked on place center and I stuck that on top of that dude's yellow jacket. And all I'm doing is brightening up that center there. So that was that. Okay. Let's jump to this next layer. All I did here is go into HSL and take down the orange saturation and then I painted it in to this stuff. Uh, oh God, no, not a radial mask, sorry. I'm just trying to show you my brush mask. Um, I just painted it in over here. It was getting a little too orange for my taste. I don't wanna overdo the, the color and that was just way too intense. So I took it down there by dropping the saturation and on a separate layer, uh, dropping the saturation and then masking it into where I didn't want it. Um, and then I just went in and added denoise into this guy simply just soften it up. So let me show you again the before and the after. The before and the after slider, right? You can see that the little boat's moving a little bit, uh, but that's because that's a single exposure. This is the blended HDR that took all three photos, which obviously the boat was moving through three of them. I think it did a really good job of uh, putting the boat, um, you know, making it um, not too blurry. Okay, uh, like I said, last step would be go to Luminar or Lightroom or Topaz Studio, um, any, of the, any of the products that have a, um, a removal, spot removal, Snap Heal is a great one. Get rid of those uh, little spots that were on my lens. Uh, but that's my workflow for a sunset. I like the photo, I'm a fan. Um, hope you like it, hope it helps. And that was it, that was it for my video. I'm just having fun playing around with the Roar HDR because it's awesome and um, I'm done my friends. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, hit me up down below. I'll do my best to answer. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. And if you have any questions, um, let me know. Thanks again. Have a great one. Take care. See you soon and adios.